Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation, or TMS, has been FDA approved in the US as a method for the treatment of depression in 2008. In this video we will discuss one TMS protocol, the so-called Intermittent Theta Burst Stimulation Protocol, which received FDA approval in 2018. In previous videos we have discussed studies by O'Riordan and colleagues and Lefkowitz and colleagues that introduced two other protocols a standard high-frequency repetitive TMS protocol and a similar protocol using deep TMS. If you want to know more about these protocols and if you would like to know how TMS works and what potential side effects are, we invite you to take a look at our previous videos. But please, watch this one first to the end, because you probably want to know more about intermittent theta burst stimulation. Before we begin, it should be pointed out, if you feel troubled, about the status of your mental health, we encourage you to seek contact with a mental health specialist. This video is meant to inform you about the studies that showed the efficacy of TMS in treating depression. But this video does not intend to persuade you in favor of TMS or opposing TMS as a treatment method. The study published by Blumberger and colleagues in 2018, which led to the FDA approval of intermittent theta burst stimulation, compared two different protocols. A high-frequency TMS protocol that was similar to the ones that were used previously and the intermittent theta burst stimulation protocol. First, let's have a look at those two protocols. During high-frequency repetitive TMS, a fast strain of pulses is given with a break afterwards. In this study, for example, 10 pulses were applied per second and this was done for 4 seconds meaning that within this 4 second window there are 40 pulses and this is then followed up by a break of 26 seconds. This pattern is repeated 75 times resulting in a total of 3000 pulses in about 37 and a half minutes. Previous FDA approved protocols used quite similar stimulation patterns. So what is intermittent theta burst stimulation or abbreviated ITBS? With ITBS, a more complex pattern is provided. There are bursts with three very fast pulses with only 20 milliseconds between each pulse. The bursts are repeated 10 times every 200 milliseconds. In other words, within a time window of 2 seconds, 10 bursts happen. After that, there is an 8 second rest period. This is repeated 20 times, resulting in a total of 600 pulses. Because all those pulses happen so fast, the entire protocol is done in little over 3 minutes. Interestingly, ITBS was first introduced in a research setting in 2005 by Huang and colleagues. Similar to high frequency repetitive TMS, it was shown to activate a brain region. Over the years, the effectiveness of ITBS has shown to be quite similar to that of high frequency repetitive TMS. So the main advantage is not that it is much better than conventional repetitive TMS, but that it is much faster. An ITBS protocol is done within 3 minutes, whereas a repetitive TMS protocol takes about 20 or 30 minutes. Having said that, ITBS protocols are based on elaborate evidence of direct brain stimulation in animal studies. Particularly these super fast bursts have been shown to increase brain activity and promote neuroplasticity, which is the strengthening of connections in the brain. So in that sense, ITBS relies on a relatively solid scientific base. Before we go on and describe the study by Blumberger and colleagues, also note that there is a protocol called Continuous Theta Burst Stimulation or CTBS. CTBS is somewhat similar to ITBS but there are no breaks between the bursts. This bombardment of stimulation has shown to reduce activity in the brain. In a research setting, this protocol has been shown to be quite useful, but it is not used for FDA approved therapy currently. All right, so let's now go to the study of Blumberger and colleagues. Their multi-center randomized control trial included participants from three Canadian health institutes. A total of 385 patients received a 4-week treatment with 5 sessions per week. 
192 patients received high-frequency RTMS and the other 193 patients received the ITBS treatment. It should be pointed out that all participants were treatment resistant, meaning that they had at least one prior antidepressant therapy that had failed. Also, none of the patients was currently on antidepressant medication. All stimulation was applied using a figure of 8 coil over the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is the same as in other FDA approved protocols for depression. Participants underwent an MRI scan before the treatment and the location of stimulation was determined and monitored using a neuronavigation system based on this MRI scan. As in previous studies, the goal was to increase the activation in the left prefrontal area, which has been shown to improve depressive symptoms. Treatment responses on depression symptoms were assessed by the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale one week after the treatment. To get an indication of long-term effects, treatment effects were also analyzed 4 and 12 weeks after the end of the treatment. The main outcome measures were response and remission rates. Response rate is defined as a reduction in symptoms compared to baseline of at least 50%. Remission rates relate to a total score on the questionnaire below a certain value, at which the patient is no longer identified as being clinically depressed. So let's have a look at the results. Response rate for high frequency repetitive TMS was 47%. For ITBS it was 49%. And remission rates were 27 and 32% for repetitive TMS and ITBS respectively. The results were stable and remained for 12 weeks after the treatment for both repetitive TMS and ITBS. The most common side effect was a headache after the session reported by about 65% of participants in both groups. Other side effects were rare. So what can we conclude from this study? Well, MRI guided repetitive high frequency TMS and ITBS improved depression symptoms in about half of all participants. Also, it should be kept in mind that all participants were treatment resistant. This suggests that when including a more general population, response rates are expected to be higher. So overall ITBS is not necessarily better than conventional repetitive TMS, but the advantage is that it is much faster. And this opens the opportunity to repeat this 3 minute protocol multiple times a day. This is what the Stanford Neuromodulation Treatment Protocol attempted. They applied 10 sessions a day for 5 days, which has led to amazing results of 80-90% to remission rates. However, sample sizes up until now for this protocol have been quite low and high sample replications will be necessary before this protocol receives FDA approval. Besides new protocols, also optimizing location of stimulation and individualizing treatments to everyone's unique brain activity pattern will likely increase the effects in the future. So all in all, there is still a lot to gain and more research is needed. Nevertheless, we are on a good way. And in future videos, we will discuss other TMS protocols for therapeutic application in more detail. We hope you found this information useful and we hope to see you the next time.